let's talk about video game install sizes. So I'm sure you're aware, either with first-hand experience or hearing about it online, that games are getting larger and larger. A perfect example of that is something like Call of Duty Warzone. That game is close to, if not over, 200 gigabytes, depending on the patch they're pushing out. And that's a lot, seeing as a lot of consoles are between like 500 gigabytes and a terabyte. I feel like a lot of people don't really understand why this is. So let me shed some light on that for you. It wasn't that long ago that games really weren't that large. They could fit on a single dual area DVD or a Blu-ray disc in the case of the PlayStation. They were between like 4 gigabytes and 25 gigabytes, sometimes a little higher than that. But it pretty much topped out at like 30, 40 gigabytes. A number of things has changed though in recent years. Let's start with the first one. 4K displays. 4K displays are more common than ever. So much so that we even got significant console upgrades in the middle of a console generation, in the form of the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro, both of which can natively display a 4K image to a 4K display. Which leads us to number two, users getting 4K displays and 4K capable consoles were noticing that their 1080p games weren't looking quite as crispy on their new displays as they once did. Of course, these users started demanding higher fidelity games out of developers, which, of course, is a reasonable request. So, of course, developers had to find a way to make these games look better. Which brings us to the third point. Developers started responding to this with higher resolution games and higher resolution textures. There are several ways to make a game look better. The simplest one that most people can understand is just making the output resolution of the game much higher. So instead of something like 1080p, you would have 4K. Now this works, obviously, and it certainly makes the game look better, but it requires a lot of GPU power to actually push all those pixels. There are much more efficient ways to make games look better than just cranking up the resolution. One of those is higher resolution textures, and the other is higher resolution or higher detailed meshes. Now to really understand this next point, I'm going to have to kind of go off on a little bit of a tangent about what makes a game's graphics. Because if you aren't a game dev, this next part could be a little confusing. I'm going to try to keep it simple for the sake of brevity. A game is made up of a lot of parts, but most of what you see on the actual screen is just meshes and textures. Meshes are just a collection of dozens, hundreds, or even thousands, maybe even millions in the case of next generation, of triangles used to draw an object in 3D space. This pot, for instance, is 1,964 triangles. In general, the more triangles you have, the larger the asset that's actually stored on the disk is going to be. Of course, we're still talking about really small file sizes here for meshes, especially in comparison to something like a texture. Our pot here, for instance, has again 1,964 triangles, but it's only 112 kilobytes on the disk. This could cause an issue if you have something like a large open world game, but those tend to reuse a lot of assets to mitigate that. To further this point, let's take a look at the files of a game like Skyrim VR. Its files are relatively human readable and user friendly because of their modding support. Here we can see the two archives for the meshes equal 2.43 gigabytes. Not bad in comparison to the nine archives for the 7.19 gigabytes. So it's clearly not meshes that are causing the explosion in game sizes its textures. Let's take a look back at our pot here. The color and all the fine details are all from textures. Back a couple of decades, we used just one or two different kinds of textures to really create all the detail and the color and everything, and they were low resolution, but they worked. Fast forward a little bit, and now, today, we have multiple different kinds of textures to accomplish different things. For example, you have a color layer texture that contains the actual representation of what the item looks like. You have a normal map texture that creates the illusion of depth on the surface of the mesh. Then we have things like detail maps, or masks, which are kinds of textures that contain stuff like dirt that would go on the front of a wall, or on the ground, or on just any item in the game world. We also have stuff like glow maps for like displaying glowing sections on a weapon or something like that. We have specular or roughness maps to determine how shiny or how rough something appears for lighting. It goes on and on. Those are just a few of the different kind of textures you can use to create a more believable digital object. That being said, all of those textures require being stored in memory. So in the example of the pot, we have of course the one mesh, and we have a color map, a normal map, and two detail maps. Four textures combined into a material. I won't go into what a material is in this video, but at a baseline it's really just a container to hold textures 
and information on how and what way to display those textures on a mesh. You might start to see the problem here. For each of our meshes, we're going to have multiple textures. And let's just say our mesh is 100 kilobytes, and each one of our textures is 100 kilobytes. That's 500 kilobytes for one single item in the game world, and it all has to be stored in memory. So what do we do about this? Well, compression and texture packing can help to some degree, but there's actually a better solution. It's simple, but a bit time consuming. Optimization. Let's go back to our pot here and look at each individual texture and see where we can cut and trim while still maintaining our quality. Let's start with the color texture. Its default size is 4096 by 4096. That's pretty standard for modern game design. Its file size as an asset in the engine is 17.8 megabytes. But thanks to compression, its size, if we were to ship it in a game just as it was, would be 10.6 megabytes. Compression is pretty great, but let's take a look at decreasing that even further. If we cut the texture size in half to 2048 by 2048, we get a reduction in asset size of just over four times, down to around 2.6 megabytes. Let's cut it down to one fourth its original size, down to 1024 by 1024. This was a common size from around 2010 to around 2016. Doing that, we reduce our memory footprint to around just 0.6 megabytes. Let's reduce all four textures on this pot to one fourth their original size just to see the difference. Starting off at the default resolution, we have a total size of 55.6 megabytes for all four textures. Sure, it doesn't seem like a lot, but remember, this is one item out of the possible hundreds, if not thousands, in a scene. It's reckless data usage to allow small objects like this to take up so much data. If we reduce all of those textures down to one fourth their resolution, we get a size of just 3.4 megabytes. That's an insane size reduction, right? So the answer is to just make all the texture resolutions smaller and problem solved, right? Well, sort of, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. Let's take a look back at our pot now after reducing all the textures down. This is not exactly what I would call high quality. After going back and adjusting each of the textures individually, based on what they add to the actual overall quality, such as maintaining a high normal map or high detail map, we can still maintain a high quality item without an enormous file size. Sure, it is not the highest resolution possible, but is that higher resolution on a small item like a pot really worth all of that extra data? In the end, we're left with 11.6 megabytes, down from 55.6. I'm not sure that extra data is worth that tiny bit more detail. It's all about finding balance between asset size and image quality. And that's unfortunately where we have failed as developers, maybe even failed as an industry. We've gotten so comfortable with this super powerful hardware and this relatively cheap storage sizes that we've thrown out optimization and we really need to get back to it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, let me know with a like or a comment or something because this is the stuff that I'm actually really passionate about. I love problems. I love thinking about how we can solve these kinds of problems in computer graphics or video games or anything in general. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.